Peace. I'm back on the video. We're going to be talking about Neanderthals. Okay? Now, I'm going to come flat out and say it because we all know that the black man and black woman is God. I'm going to prove to you that scholars have always known that without black folks, the whole world would not believe in God or heaven or hell. Because it's all about imagination. It's all about beliefs. So if I believe one or two, I can really say the whole Bible is trash and garbage. Because it's a, it's a belief. It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. What can you prove? Don't just point. Don't pull out some goddamn Bible verses. What can you prove? Okay. Now, this is a book right here called Chosen People from the Caucus. Michael Bradley. Jewish origins, delusions, deceptions, and historical role in the slave trade, genocide, and cultural colonization. We're going to talk about these Neanderthals. We're going to talk about these Yetis, these abominable snowmen, the book, the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch. Who the hell is that talking about? I'm going to give it to you all. Now, they are trying to shut this man up, uh, Michael Bradley, this man right here. This book right here, you can read this for free. Michael Bradley, The Iceman Inheritance. Okay? I have this book. You see that I have this book. It came yesterday in the mail. And this book, The Iceman Inheritance, I read it online. I gotta have my, I gotta have my as a book for it, man. And this is this should be in the mail tomorrow. And it's gonna answer all your questions about where these Neanderthals come from, who these Neanderthals are today, the abominable snowman, the Yeti, the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch. You're gonna find out who all of that is. And you've been looking at you been looking them in their face the whole damn time, not knowing who it is. Now, before we get into this information about these goddamn Neanderthals, so you can scratch all that white people, European, Caucasian, you can scratch all that stuff. When you look at a so-called white person, they are Neanderthals. When you read this book, Chosen People from the Caucus, and this book right here, Michael Bradley. The Iceman Inheritance, Prehistoric Sources of Western Man's Racism, Sexism, and Aggression. You're going to find out what all this is about. So you can call me a Bible denier, a Bible thumper. Guess what? I don't give a shit what you call me. You cannot refute these facts. And this is a white man admitting his own race and what his own people is doing. Now, Cause you got you got here. Look at this jump. You got you got CNA News. See, this is CNA News. Talking about some. Uh, uh, they got they got a picture of a, of a uh, Yeti. Of the uh, are these? This is Inside Edition. Are these the footprints of a Yeti? Talking about the Yeti monster. We're gonna we're gonna expose who the Yeti monster is. We're gonna expose. We're gonna show you who that the government knows who these people are. Tell us some Bigfoots and Sasquatch and Yeti monsters and abominable snowman. These people, these hairy, these hairy ass people. Let's get let's get a picture of these people. Yeti. You got stuff like this. The Yeti, the Yeti. The abominable snowman. Alright, you got you got stuff like this. You got you got crap like this, right? The abominable snowman, uh, Chewbacca. Uh, you got stuff like this, the abominable snowman, and Bigfoot. Okay. Let me go to Google. So you got Bigfoot. Who the hell is Bigfoot? So you got Bigfoot. Bigfoot or Sasquatch are said to be hairy. In the Bible it says that Esau came out hairy. See, see, watch what I'm going to expose the whole Bible. And you're going to find out what's really going on. So you got here, look at this. A 2007 photo of an of a unidentified animal that the Bigfoot research field organizations uh claims is a juvenile Sasquatch. You got something like this. 
right? You got crap like this. But then they'll tell you who these people really are. These are people. But then I tell you, what's you shave all this skin, you shave all this hair off of this, off of this, off of this person. You gotta find out who's under there. Now, let's go here. Let's see what the white man gotta say. If you are not a full-blooded African or so-called African American, your ass is a Neanderthal. Come on, Mr. White Man, Mr. Neanderthal, give it to me. What you gotta say? genetics and reproduction. And on the genetic side, I get to go to conferences and hear about advances in genetics in all species. And I was just at one a couple of weeks ago down at the Cold Spring Harbor Lab in Long Island, and uh, I learned a, a bit about um, what's being known about the, the, gene, the genome of Neanderthals, the genetic makeup of Neanderthals. That, the uh, genome sequencers, led by Svante Pavel, who works in Germany, has taken tiny little fragments of Neanderthal bones, isolated DNA, and determined the genome of the Neanderthal, and used that information to um, determine, using genetic methods, how, how long ago Neanderthals and humans were a single species, where the common ancestor was. They've also been able to compare um, human genomes and ask the question of whether there's any evidence of Neanderthal genes in the human genome. And they found that there is. And, it's, and the amount is quite significant, upwards of 5 to 7 percent. Neanderthals used to live in the Neander Valley. You could have called it the Cayuga Lake Basin, but that's where they lived. Um, and out of Africa came the modern humans, and they, the word the, the geneticists use is admixed. They admixed with the Neanderthals. And they, they all used to live in caves in those days like this. Came out of Africa, admixed with the Neanderthals. This was the Neanderthal territory. There was another group of, of uh, Neanderthal-like creatures called the Denisovans. They lived up here in Siberia. And they have a, their genome has been sequenced. They were distinct from the Neanderthals. And um, you, so you can find in people of European and Asian ancestry evidence of about 7%, 5 to 10% of genome, of your genome, is common with that of Neanderthals. We've been separated from them by, for, for 30,000 years or so. And in the, some of the tribes in Papua New Guinea, the Neanderthals are not died out. When you look at a white person, Hispanic, a Mexican, a Puerto Rican, a Scandinavian, a German, a French, a Dutch, if your ass is not a full-blooded African or African-American, your ass is a Neanderthal. You are half human. You are, you are a mutation. You are a genetic mutation. You you are half man, half beast. You're not a full-blooded human being. In those islands up there, there's evidence for... for See, he's sugarcoating. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. For a different kind of genome, which is probably the Denisovan genome. And they might have 7% Neanderthal and 5% Denisovan. They might be 12 or 15% different from us. And in fact, the, the Africans who came out from Africa have no evidence of any Neanderthal genes in out from Africa. In fact, the, the Africans who came out from Africa have no evidence of any Neanderthal genes in Now, you hear, you hear what this white man just said? Now, let me go back to, to um, the conversation I had with this white man over the phone named Doug Bo. He's a Neanderthal. Okay. And let's listen to what he said.
Then we're going to get into this Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, Abominable Snowman. Because I'm waiting for them. I want somebody to answer this question for me. When it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before man is made, who is writing for God? Who's writing for this nigga? You can't say Moses is writing for God because Moses is not born until the book of Exodus. You can't say Adam is writing for God because Adam is not born until the 26th verse in the book of Genesis, in the first chapter. So who was there to witness God creating all this stuff, doing all this stuff? That's because black folks came up with the concept of God. Because the black man and woman is God. That's how powerful our brains are. We came up with a, with a concept of God on, uh, because we could not figure out who or what put us here and how all this stuff came about. They said, okay, well, since black folks have been here from the, since the beginning of the time, they came up with the concept of God. And to prove that to you, to prove that to you, we're going to go right here to what the white man says. In this book called the Africans who wrote the Bible. The creation of the religion and concept of God in ancient Egypt. And you can call me anti-Hebrew. You can call me anti-Israelite. All that stuff. I don't give a shit what you call me. Because if you are a person who lives, who's living in this modern day generation. None of us was there back then to witness those events take place. None of us. All only thing we are doing is, is reading second hand sources. Second and third hand sources written by other men. And we are picking and choosing which one we feel is doing right. It is no different than what you do when you pick for a president. When you elect a president. Or with politicians. Politics. So it says today. The name of God is a household word in every religion and language. Around the world. Every people that do not believe in God and religion have the concept of God in the uh, recesses of their mind and disbeliefs. Most Christians do not know how this God came to, came to be because the apostolic fathers of Christianity never wanted it to be known that the foundation that the foundation of concept of God was conceived by the black people that were the ancient Egyptians. Most European scholars have known, have long known that black Africans created the concept and religion of God. However, not many have had the courage and honesty to credit these black Africans with such creation. At least one African, at least one scholar credited the Africans were creating the concept. Of religion, and he did so powerfully. So this is a man named Curtis Alexander, quoted Peter Eckler saying that an imaginative and stupid superstitious race of black men should have invented and founded in the dim obscurity of past ages a system of religious belief that still enthralls the minds and clouds the intellects of leading representatives of modern theology. That still clings to the thoughts and changes with its potential influence, the literature and faith of the civilized and cultural nations of Europe and America. It is indeed a strange illustration of the mad caprice of destiny of the insignificant and apparently trivial cause that oft produce the most grave and momentous results. Peter Eckler points out that a group of ancient, imaginative, and superstitious people created a system of religion that still mystifies the greatest religious minds of the civilized world today. Guess who these ancient, imaginative, and superstitious people were? They were black people. 
what is worthy of note in this quotation is that Peter Eckler was a Jew. His are the people that have claimed before Europeans that they created the concept of religion of the godliness for over 2,000 years. However, he knew better. This quotation is therefore like, like a confession as he wonders how such a great invention could have come to black people. A race of superstitious but, Im but imaginative people. However, it was because black people were superstitious and imaginative that they invented the concept of religion and godliness. It was the foundational concept of leading representatives of modern theology who acquired their foundational knowledge of theology from the foundational concept of these black people. So guess what? I'm not afraid of your heaven. I'm not afraid of your hell. Why? Because black folks came up with the concept of God and heaven and hell. Origins of angels and the hierarchy of the nature of God. Guess what? If I really, if I wanted to, I can throw that, I can throw that Bible in the garbage. And I can burn it. I can burn it because black folks came up with the concept of God. Black folks came up with the concept of heaven and hell. Your own, the scholars are saying this stuff. White scholars, white Jewish people. That's why they know that black folks, the black man and black woman, is God. Why do black folks hate Egypt? Because what's shown on TV through media and who owns the entertainment media? White people, Neanderthals. Now, if you want to get this book, it's called The Africans Who Wrote the Bible by Dr. Ph.D. Nana Banshee Darkwa, Right? And it's going through all this stuff, and it's showing you the concept of, of, of uh, how God came to be, who, who thought of God, who thought of heaven and hell, who thought of angels, black folks, niggas, negroes. Origin of the concept of a male God who lives in the heaven. Origin of the concept of death, heaven, and hell. Um this this is this is deep. This is deep. Now let's put this to the side. I'm not afraid of your I'm not afraid of your commandments, your so-called Ten Commandments, because you don't know who even wrote that stuff. But guess what? If you read these books, Chosen People from the Caucus and the Ice Man Inheritance. See when you talk about the Ice Age. The last ice age or the ice ages, it did not affect, did not affect the whole world. It was not a worldwide event. It only affected one particular mass, one particular region in the world, and that so-called happened to white people, Neanderthals. Now, give me one second. Maybe one second. See, I don't have time to sugarcoat and play games with you. You don't know what's going on in this world. Now, since I'm not afraid of your God or your heaven and hell, and you don't know that the God in the Bible is made up by white folks. They have inserted their imaginative creation of God and it's Yahweh, Jehovah, or Jehovah, and he is in, uh, in the end of all deity. From the carcass mountain. Now. Let's get into this. Let's go back here to. One second. Looking for a 
Sorry. Okay. Now, this says, are these footprints of a Yeti? This is inside edition. This is just two days ago. All right. So it says here that they talk about these ape-like creatures that is taller than human. Now we're about to expose these. Let's go here to. Um, let's go here to. Um, let me one second. Give me one second. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Okay. So this is called the Ice Man and Harris, this a frightening publication history of Jewish media suppression. So it says now, for the first time in 23 years, there's a new and revised edition of one of the most notorious underground bestsellers in North American publishing history, possibly second to the only, possibly second only to the secret relationship between blacks and Jews. So this is the original cover of the Iceman Inheritance, a most the most provocative provocative book you ever read, All right? And this guy is bringing straight proof. So it says the original jacket description of this book was, of this book was quote Michael Bradley delves back into our glacial past during the Ice Age in order to find the prehistoric sources of the white race's aggression, racism, and sexism. Relying on the researches of Alexander Mashak, Marshak, Carson Kuhn, Conrad Lorenz, and such and such, Bradley offers a pervasive argument that the white race, the Neanderthal Caucasoids, Caucasoids are more aggressive than any other group because of ancient sexual maladaptation. And in tracing the effects of Caucasian aggression, Bradley offers an uncomfortable and all too plausible um, plausible pattern of human history. So, I'm going to post this link in my description box. You can read this for yourself. Get the books, read this stuff, and you can see what the hell is going on. Now, um, one second. Okay. So now we're going here to the book, The Ice Man Inheritors, right? The whole book for free. Okay? They're going all the way back in time. Now I want to go here to this section of. Uh, I want to see what their own people admit to doing. Okay. So this, this is the introduction. This book is racist. For, among other things, I will attempt to show that racism itself is a predisposition of but one race of mankind, the white race. I believe that I can show that our converging contemporary crisis, like racism itself, have their origins in the prehistory of the white race alone. Uh, it says... We are, uh, attribute various threats to our survival to man's folly, but this is a conscious and self-protecting euphemism. Uh, Nuclear war and environmental pollution, resource rape, are all primary threats to our survival and are all the results of peculiarly Caucasoid behavior, Caucasoid values, Caucasoid psychology. There is no way to avoid the truth. The problem with the world is white men. Now, I didn't write this stuff. This is the man right here. He wrote this stuff. Michael, I mean, uh, Michael Bradley. He's a so-called Jew. He's a Neanderthal. Now, let's keep on going. Listen to what they admit that the government does. Let's see. Now, check this out. Listen to this. Let's 
listen what they listen what these white folks do. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Okay, so it says progress is vindication of all crises which threaten our survival. It is the materialistic conception of hope itself, and if little good good can be said of us and our civilization, we Caucasians can be proud that we brought progress to them. He says, after some hard thinking, medicine and liter uh, literacy are generalized cite cited as benefits enjoyed by them. The profits, of course, accrue to us. Now let's now let's let's jump over here and let's go up here and say it to that. Okay. Check this out. It says now I talk about the uh, industrial. Let's see here. The industrial. Let's see here. It says besides there is there is an uh, apple. Uh, apolytic ge uh, geometry. To, uh, to progress, a dark Matulism quality to the entire concept. Uh, let's jump down here. Let's get down to the good part. In 1974, the United Nations Worldwide Organization released statistics that were a bit of peril for our progressive pretenses to swallow. Now let's jump down here. Let's get down here to this is what they say. So they're talking about all this stuff, right? And it says today, in addition to the well-known fact that the progressive pollution of our cells and our environment has increased, the incidence of the, the, uh, degenerative diseases like cancer and heart disease throughout the Western world, there is the lesser known fact that our war technology may very well be promoting epidem epidemic, epidemic diseases of, of rare birth uh, virulence. More than one expert has voiced the opinion that the mysterious legionnaire disease was struck, which struck delegates to the American Legion Convention in, in Philadelphia in 1976, was caused by the by escape toxins associated with chemical biological warfare research. The swine flu uh, scars of 1975 and 1976 has also suspiciously military overtones. The four original casualties of swine flu were soldiers, where soldiers stationed at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Biological warfare agents are stored at Fort Dix, and the swine flu influenza is a prime CBW research agent. As early as 1969, U.S. Congressman Richard D. McCarthy published evidence linking, linking epidemic diseases in men, domestic cattle, wildfire, and food crops to escape CBW toxins. Most incidents up until 1969 has taken place in the vicinity of Fort Detrick, Maryland, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and Dugway Proving Grounds, Utah, CBW research installations. Thanks to experiments at Fort Detrick's Rocky Mountains, Fort Detrick, Rocky, Rocky Mountain spotted fever now in New England and Venezuela occurs more wildfire in the southern eastern states. It says both are CBW experimental strains. In September of 1976, researchers learned that bubonic plague is present among Colorado wildfire in the vicinity of the Rocky Mountain arsenal where that agent is stored. And it goes on to say that recent evidence raises the ominous possibility that CBW research may have already promoted a massive uh, colostridia epidemic among U.S. domestic, uh, domestic cattle. Over the past three years, some 1,500 cattle in 22 American states have been found mysterious, mysteriously mutilated. Mutilated is, is a misnomer. The dead cattle have been found with selected organs and tissues surgically removed. And the organs and tissues in question are usually those needed to determine 
the uh, Colostridia infection. It says, of all mutilated cattle, later uh, autopsies, 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 some 40% have been found to be infected with the bacteria. The listen to this. Listen to this. The mysteriously mutilators, whoever they are, apparently use military helicopters, and the conclusion is becoming inescapable, inescapable that they must enjoy government protection since the, since the mutilators are never revealed by official researchers. Now, listen to what they say about the weather. The CIA report lists the adverse climate changes of the earlier 1970s. So they said that, that they are doing this stuff. The dust reflects more sun black back to sun light back to space. They talk about weather manipulation. Okay? Now, let's jump down here to let's go to page what one hundred. So you know how they always call black folks monkeys and coons and apes? Well let's see what this what the what their own scholars say about these Neanderthals, white people. Neanderthals are white people. They have not died off. You're looking at them. You strip this, you strip this Yeti monster down, and you shave him down. He's a white person. You shave book, you you shave Bigfoot ass down to skin. He's a white person. Let's go to Google. I'm not had any books. Read this stuff. Okay, so let's go here to Bigfoot. I mean, uh, uh, Abominable Snowman. Images. These Abominable Snowmen, they're trying to find out where these footprints are coming from. They, they talking about these Abominable Snowmans and Bigfoots and Yeti Monsters and Sasquatch are, are creatures. But these are the Anderthals. These creatures... These people, these are human beings. These are white folks. And if you strip down, if they were not, they are not this tall. They are not no uh, abominable snowman. Is not no ten feet tall. These people are like five feet tall. The women are shorter. So you got yeti, yeti or abominable snowman. All right, it's like uh, it's taller than uh, it's said to inhabit the Himalayan mountains. Where's the Himalayan Mountains at? The Himalayan Mountains is in Asia, in Mount Everest. Then they say uh, Noah's Ark landed in Mount Everest. Uh, watch how I tell that about the park. Watch how I show them uh, the nose of white men. Oh man, you all gonna be, you all be pissed off at me. You be mad at me. Watch how I strip that Bible the park. I'm gonna tear it apart. Watch how I show them through that that those that those ten commandments, those curses and Deuteronomy is not for us. Those curses in Deuteronomy were for somebody else. The original slaves, the first slaves to come to, come here to the United States, were white folks, were white people. So, if the first slaves to come here was white people, what were we doing? Who are we? We were kings and queens, gods and goddesses. Now, let's go back here.
Today, today they hide this stuff. And you Negroes don't want to pick up a book and read. You keep on talking about the, the feast day, the Sabbath day. You don't know who the hell that's for. Description box. Okay. The Neanderthals people have not died off. They're still here. You're looking at them. White people, Hispanics, Mexicans, Native uh, uh, Mexicans. If you are not a full-blooded human, African, African American, your ass is the Neanderthal. Now I'm looking for. Let me see. Okay, now check this out. This is on page 104 in the Ice Man Inheritance. Now, these are uh, excavation scientists, anthropologists. Listen to what they say about, about the uh, 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 Negro. Okay? Now, check this out. This is what the author says in this book. It says, the Antithal was human. The Antithal, they are human. But it is absurd to call him Caucasoid. This is a quote. It is my feeling that Carson Kuhn was led astray by his view of race. It is my suggestion that Kuhn got hit the relationship between Caucasoids and the Neanderthals backwards. Neanderthals were not Caucasoids. It is the other way around. Caucasoids or Caucasians are Neanderthals. Caucasoids is the label we apply to the present historical inhabitants of Eurasia because they can be roughly differ, uh, differentiated from other kinds of men on the basis of Neanderthal vestiges they retain. This otherwise very variable Eurasian population, that of the Caucasoids, just barely retains sufficient traces of very distinctive Neanderthal adaptations to justify regarding it as a group. Uh, now let's jump up here. Now this is what they say. Okay. Both Ashley Montango and Ivan T. Sanderson have, have observed that the Caucasoids, far from being the most refined race, are actually the most primitive appearing and least refined race. Uh oh. Listen to this. If races would take, this is what uh, Ashley Montango says. If racists would take the trouble to visit their local zoo, talking about white people, white people are racist. Black folks, we didn't even get a chance to be racist. But listen to what they say. Check this out. You are not no damn apes and coons and monkeys. You white, you black folks. You're God. Now. Listen to this. Ashley Montango says, quote, If racists would take the trouble to visit their local zoo and for a moment drop their air of superiority and take a dispassionate look at one of the apes, they would find the hair of these creatures length, that their lips are thin, and that their bodies are profusely covered with hair. In these characters, the white man stands near the apes. Did you hear that? Your own people said that you the apes. You the monkeys. Ivy T. Sanders says, quote, the Negro so-called race is apparently the newest and is the least ponged like of all. What does that word ponged means? 
It says in parentheses, apes have no lips and the straightest of hair, the shortest legs and the shortest arms, and a host of other features that are that are the exact opposite of those of Negroes. The most pongate like are the Caucasoids, which have non-inverted lips, straight hair, and so forth. The Mongoloids are really different from, from the bow. Their long head hair, round in section, and, and their absence of body hair is very odd. So also are the proportion of the parts of, the, of their limbs with small hands and feet, short lower limbs and upper and uh, and long upper. Now, you hear what the white man just said. Now, let's go into this book right here far around the time. Chosen people from the caucus. Michael Bradley. Listen what they say. Let's see. One second. You stripped the, uh, you stripped the, uh, the Yeti monster down, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, those are white folks. They, the, the Sasquatch, they can talk. They got documents on them. Russian documents. One second. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, here you go. You check this out. So it says here that Okay. So they have different names for these for these so called human beings, the Yeti monsters. The Almas, these Captar Gully Yvonne Almas had a primitive form of language. So who is the Almas or the or the, or the Captar? Let's see who the Alma and the Captar are. Let's see who this is. They have all this stuff documented. So they call it the, the Cap the Captar. The Captar. That's another name for Bigfoot. See, when you type in Captar, it comes out the Almas or Alma. Turkish, Mongoloid for wild man, is a purported hominid, cryptozoological species reputed to inhabit the Caucasus, <coughs> the Pamir Mountains or of Central Asia. Okay? Now, here it is, Amas, similar creatures, skunk, ape, Bigfoot, Yeti, country, where they at, Mongolia, Russia, Central Asia, Caucasus, the Caucasus. Your Bigfoot, Yeti, monsters, Sasquatch, these are white people, these are Neanderthals. They can talk. But their speech is very primitive. Now, so it says here that, listen to this. This is a, uh, one of their scholars. Kakalov did his survey of animal species and estimated populations, but early on, early on, he came across literally hundreds of reports of, hundreds of reports of, a, of an animal so strange and intriguing that this creature actually became the emphasis of his massive report. Mountain villagers of the Caucasus called it the Captar. Further east in the Hindu Kush and Pamirs, it was called the Guli Yavan. While the people of the Tian Shans, the Altia Mountains on, on either side of the 
the Zoom Gary Gate called it an Amos or Amos. The names might change from place to place, but the descriptions Kokolov gathered were remarkably consistent. Listen to this. It was short, but very massively built. Built. Human. He was a very massively built human being. It had a big head. Females had huge hips and huge pentunulous breasts. Females and young ones traveled in fairly large groups, but the males seemed to be the solitary. They could range in color from black fur, black fur to almost blonde fur, but the most common color was a sort of rich mahogany. Are you hearing this? A mahogany. Okay? Now, I make I'm about to make a part two to this. Okay, so you so you got the almas. Almas, Bigfoot, Yeti, Sasquatch, this is what you get. Right? Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti Monster, and he just put on CNN, CNN News that uh, uh, they found some footprints of these uh, Sasquatches, Yeti Monsters. But let's keep on going. It says, so the reason they had all this hair on them because they was in the, they was in the Ice Age. And without all that hair on them, they would freeze to death. They would die. It says, their fur... Their fur or hair was very profuse except on the breast of the females and was usually straight. However, the hair of the head was often, often curly, like a woolly mahogany fleece. They had large protruding faces and very large noses with large elongated nostrils. They lived in very remote valleys high up in the mountains, but they were not all rare. Most of the mountain folk had seen at least one or two during their lives. Karkalov was shown shacks in which one or two captured creatures had been in prison, and a chain and a collar which had shackled an unfortunate female who had been used for some years as a sexual toy by men of one of uh, Kravinj village. Several had been killed. So they, they said they had this, this, uh, these, mon these so-called Sasquatch and uh, Yeti and Bigfoot and Abominable Snowman in chains. But these are human beings. These captars or almonds have had a primitive form of language. They wore crude clothing on occasion and would carry on trade by barter with remote mountains villages. They could interbreed with modern humans, and the child was usually very smart. One boy who had been born among Amos, of an Amos woman, when his father had become separated from a caravan in the high pass, in the high pass later, after he and his father had escaped, joined the Lamen Gigan Monastery. Uh, Listen to this. Since Kakalov collected several hundred reports, he concluded that some sort of a some sort of wild man lived in the mountains of Eurasia. He completed his report in 1914 and submitted it to the Imperial Academy. But this was on the eve of World War I and the revolution that was to follow in 1917. Kakalov's report was shelved and forgotten. Then in 1951, mountainer photograph, uh, photographer Arab Shipton of the Everest Expedition brought back his famous photography, I mean photograph of some large, not quite human footprint in the, in the, in the Himalayan snow. Shipton's guide, a uh, shepherd, claimed to know all about the wild man of the high mountains and called it a yeti. These stories of wild mountain men and this word Yeti 
has been coming out of the Himalayas and Pamirs for years. About a decade previously, a communist for the Calcutta statesman, Mr. Henry Newman, has stated for his readers that Yeti meant abominable snowman. The Western press picked up on his name, associated Shipton's, Shipton's very, very real and very puzzling phot photographs with this abominable snowman. And most people in the Western world have heard about it. Listen to this. The Soviets also heard about it, and they were not happy. Their official position was that this abominable snowman was a powerful myth invented by Western intelligence agencies in order to justify sending scientific expeditions into the premieres and Himalayas expeditions whose sophisticated equipment were actually intended to spy across the Soviet border. Separate stories of this ilk appeared in Pravada during the early 1950s. Then, however, someone discovered Kakala's massive and now dusty report, which have been unknown and ignored for almost 40 years. The Soviets changed their tune and undertook profit scientific in investigation on the situation while the Western press continued to regular West, uh, readers with fanciful abominable snowman stories and most Western, Western scientists contented themselves with ridiculing the whole affair. Uh, the entire effort was under the direction of Dr. Uh, B.F. Porchenev and A.A. Uh, Smarkov, mem members of the USSR Academy of Science. Listen to this. These four expeditions went precisely to the places Kokolov had visited almost a half century earlier. The reason for this was that in the intervening 50 years, Neanderthal bones have been found at the following places, at these places. 1952, in Crimea, 1924, in uh, Uzbekistan, in 1938, in Turkey, in 1954, in 1949, and things like that, in the mountains. Quite obviously, Kokolov's wild man could not have been inspired by these discoveries because all these Neanderthal remains have been discovered long after Kokolov had filed his report. And since Kokolov had submitted hundreds of reports of Neanderthal-like creatures, just a stone's throw from where actual Neanderthal remains have subsequently have been found, it seemed more than possible that some relatively pure Neanderthal remnants populations might still exist in these remote mountain areas, or at least might have existed until very recently. You see that? So, it says here that they talk about these Neanderthals, the abominable snowman, the Yeti monsters, all that stuff. These are white folks. These are, these are white people. And they're still alive. Their existence, at least until their very recent past, cannot be reasonably doubted. And from what is known of human evolution during and since the last, last ice age, these captars and kindred creatures can only be purely Neanderthals. These creatures must have migrated higher up into the mountains as the climate warms, seeking the kind of weather for which they were adapted. These, these people, these yeti monsters, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Abominable Snowman, these are Neanderthals. These are white folks. So, you put a white person up against a Neanderthal, these are white people. If your ass is not a full-blooded African or African-American, your ass is a, your ass is a, 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 a beast. You a beast. These are not my words. These are their words. Now, so you got Bigfoot or Sasquatch? Sasquatch. Now listen to what Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud. He knew about this stuff, and they and they hid his papers.
IQ. Let me see, I got five minutes left. In the early 1980s, a West German researcher named uh, Smith was working on a book about the career of Sandor uh, Ferenczi when in a trunk full of papers and correspondence, she came across a 12-page tract and Sigmund Freud's handwriting. Freud had written this essay in 1919, but its existence had been unsuspected for over 60 years. In this newly discovered essay, Sigmund Freud came precariously close to overturning his own theories of psychosexuality and psychotherapy because he concluded that many, or even most, acute anxiety neurosis stem not from childhood trauma, but from racially remembered century-long trauma of trying to survive during the last ice age. According to this short 12-page essay, Surviving outside the Stone Age caves was so brutal that the only respite from it were perverse sexual pleasures within the caves where Ice Age men took their frustration, aggressions, and fears out on their men. I mean, on their women. Freud's brief essay was published, but Caporius notes and comments by Harvard University in 1987. Uh, 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 it was published in 1987. Now, it says here that uh, a phylogenetic fantasy argued precisely what the Iceman inheritance had argued nine years earlier, but on a considerable morally scientific grounds that Freud, Sigmund Freud, quote, that much, he says, he's talking about white folks, Neanderthals. He says that much of our behavior, the way they act, so he's saying that the reason, they, the reason they do the things they do or the way, or the way they act, or how they act, is because, it's because that, he says that, that much of our behavior was conditioned by the Ice Age evolutionary experience. Behavior still genetically transmuted and was selected by cultural values of Ice Age profile, that the essence of this aggression behavior was psychosexual maladaptation. Thus, the Iceman inheritance came to be supported by lost work of none other than Sigmund Freud. Who was Sigmund Freud? Who was this white man? This, this Neanderthal. So you got Sigmund Sigmund Freud. This white man. He's a Neanderthal. He's, he's known for a psychoanalysis. Let's type in the Flintstones. Who is the Flintstones talking about? The cartoon. The Flintstones. Flintstones, Wikipedia. Flintstones is an American animated sitcom and whatever, blah, 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 blah. And it says that the continual uh, popularity of Flintstones uh, stems from the Stone Age, Stone Age setting. Let's drop down here. What does it say? This show is a comical satire version of the Stone Age, which, although it uses primitive technology, resem resembles mid 20th century suburban America. The uh, the plots del deliberately resemble the sitcom era with the caveman, Flintstone, and Rubble. So they said these people are cavemen. These people live in caves. The Flintstones. Here it is, the cavemen. Flintstones. We click on caveman. We click on caveman. What does it take you to? Caveman. What does it take you to? Neanderthals. The Flintstones are based on Neanderthals. These white people. I'm not making this stuff up. If your ass is not a full-blooded human, uh, African or African-American, your ass is a Neanderthal. You a beast. You a beast. You're half human, half something else. Don't get pissed off at me. This is what your own science is saying. With that being said, peace.